Hey, hey, we're back for another episode of Revival Cast, and we've got uh, Valix back with us on cam this week. Um, and we have our guest from the forums, uh, Donnie Ergo, in addition to our uh, new usual co host, Cheshire, and our old usual co host, Sailkite, and uh, I'm Diggs for those who don't know. Um, and this week we're hoping to uh, talk about the blog, of course, which is um, about item attributes, um, and also dive into PvP, because I hear that uh, that's something that Donnie Ergo loves to talk about. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with uh, my usual round with Cheshire and Sale and see what you guys have been up to. I guess the big new thing, I usually ask you guys about IRC, but I was in IRC this week. I finally figured out how to uh, add that to my phone instead of my PC. Um, so now I can always be in there. What what exciting stuff happened in IRC this week, do you think? I'll leave that to sale because I wasn't in IRC most of this week. <laughs> Um, there weren't any super exciting and or contentious discussions. Um, we had a couple new faces show up, and so we were answering, answering sort of like, you know, the usual um, hi, I'm new here questions and stuff like that, um, which is just fine and totally cool. And we always love seeing new people in IRC, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't think there were any large uh, thing. Well, okay. There is one thing. Uh, some of you will get this, some of you will not, but the spirit of inspiration starfish is watching over us all. <laughs> that sounds uh, very uh, mysterious. Sounds like fun. Um, I thought we, we did get a little glimpse of a uh, run through of an estate, uh, which was kind oh, of Oh yes, in fact. Yeah, I forgot that was public. So Kedrin um, posted on, I believe it was on his personal um, YouTube, or it might have been on the Revival YouTube, a uh, a bit of sort of like a work in progress of getting a lighting solution working in one of the estates that we haven't seen yet. Um, and it looks super gorgeous, like even without the lighting, the, the work that's gone into it is outstanding. And uh, it's it's just, it, go find it, it's somewhere, I, I know it's somewhere, I think we'll try to drop a link in chat um, and then maybe uh, try to make the link more public on the forums, but yeah, it's, it's definitely out there. Uh, and it looks super cool. <laughs> super cool. cool. And then, uh, Vel, you're back with us? I am. I've been uh, out from basically a sabbatical in the wilderness is kind of the best way to describe it. But uh, out enjoying nature, uh, getting some good physical work in with a different job. So it's been, uh, it's been a fun summer. I've had a chance to uh, kind of reset and get refocused for another winter of riding and a, another long year. I've got actually working on a nano remo project for this november so that is what i'm really super getting set for so i'm pretty excited for that and uh yeah excited to get back into revival cast uh back into theory forge more which you guys if you watch that show too um back in this friday and then uh tent on hammer been doing a lot more content than usual and quite a bit of revival content over there the last week so go check that yeah, out and you and you had a chance to drop into the forums a couple of times this week. Um, yeah, I did. I'm, I'm slowly, I'm just feeling my way around again, trying to figure out where the conversations are happening and kind of connecting where I can. But yeah, I'll be in there more so you guys will see me more in the forums as well. Cool. And uh, we were hoping to get Donnie Ergo on uh, last week to um, jump into our, I think we had a, it's been an hour long on PvP last week, just uh, the three of us. Um, but uh, Donnie Ergo was busy, so we didn't get to have him on cam, but I wanted to bring him in so we could get his uh, views on PvP, which we'll jump into a little bit later. Um, how's your uh, week been going, Donnie Ergo? Well, it was awesome, because we finally see some more footage on estates, uh, and like Bjorn was extremely like uh, excited about it. Uh, I think it's like such an awesome thing with IRC because we can get so much information from the devs not the, like the obvious information about like you know bears and wolves and how we're gonna kill them but just some you know some ideas from them so I, I think like every week in IRC is awesome and I'm, I'm just happy to be here yeah cool yeah and um, also it seems like they take ideas from 
people in IRC too. Um, so it's a it's a great spot to be in. Um, and it's kind of amazing because they're really um, they're really active in IRC, but they're also really active on the forums. And you would think they would need twins to take care of all of that stuff. Which is surprising. Um, so we get so much information. Uh, one of the cool things we did get that's a tangential to um, Revival maybe is that Star Citizen had some kind of cool release. So I think there's a big package there. We're kind of saying that their, um, their module release is kind of working. Um, maybe more delayed than they were hoping for, but uh, stuff is getting out there. So Hopefully that will be uh, similar for um, Revival to we'll, uh, get our, our, our stages out. Um, but uh, so our, our blog this week was about um, enhancing items. And I was really hoping that it would be more focused on um, gear than crafting so we could have a smooth segue into PvP. Um, but uh, this was pretty interesting too. It was mainly focused on crafting wine, of all things, um, and how you can add different attributes. And one of the big concepts there was branding. What did you guys think of the blog? I, I was pretty intrigued by the whole uh, branding thing. That's something I've always wanted to do as a crafter in MMOs, was to be able to brand the things that I actually made. Um, Maybe not so much wine. Uh, <laughs> I tend to be more of a weapons kind of person, but you don't know. Maker's mark on those two. Mm -hmm. Sale? Well. Go ahead, Don. Sale. Go no, ahead, no, Don. Tell us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, I think like this blog is. Uh, a nice summary of some ideas we were getting through the months, like uh, talking about some crafting and other stuff. And we finally got like a full process of like all the things in one. And it's very intriguing how it will work in game. And if it will be like exactly the same as it was in block, it will be like extremely interesting. Because like making a single thing like a bottle of wine will take you a lot of work and can give you a lot of things, and other people can do something with it. Uh, that's something awesome. I hope it will be working as intended. Yeah, I very much agree, actually. The kind of being able to see, like, essentially from start to effective finish, right, you know, on the market of a single product, I think was really, uh, really good to just have so that we can, you know, Hey, I'm uh, wondering about crafting, and then you know, just go ping people to the uh, blog number fifty. I'm like, thanks, um, it'll be good. Uh, but yeah, I um, well, I, I think there's just there are so many possibilities for what kind of things can influence what we're crafting, whether it's something consumable like wine or potentially reusable like a wine bottle, or even gear. Right? The um, as far as we know from some of the or the forum posts there will be um, like the, the quality of you know, the materials that you use in, for instance, a sword or armor um, will influence its properties um, as well as, you know, your forging techniques and what have you. So, you know, it, it, I think it, the fact that the through, you know, everything you do has an influence on the final product means that people, I believe, will be very more willing to either explore or experiment in a certain way, be that physically going to somewhere else to get materials or, um, you know, just throwing in a different kind of salt for a potion uh, or whatnot. I, I'm very excited to see sort of how actually far we can go with that and, and you know, maybe get some unforeseen results uh, out of that as such. Yeah, well, yeah that's, for me, I was... Oh, go Sorry, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, for me, I, I was just excited with this blog to see, you know, getting another taste of systems interaction. Um, and Diggs mentioned earlier, you know, Star Citizen having uh, their release and finally, you know, a couple things interacting. I think that's one thing, you know, that we experienced following Landmark. And, uh, you know, it, one thing for people to realize with, you know, the delay between stages 
I think is really important is that not only are they building, you know, kind of a new game engine to for this game, but actually a new way of thinking for how these games are made. So a lot of R&D, I would say, um, and just trying to see how you can make something like this work. So I mean, definitely for people out there, like this is a, a patient waiting game for this. It's you know, it might take a while. Things might come slower than we expect them to, and definitely slower than we want them to. But uh, getting that out of the way, um, it was cool to see the blog kind of touch into how some of these things, you know, a few things might be interacting. Uh, me personally, as somebody who's probably going to make heavily use, heavily use of the disguise, stealth systems, um, intrigue, and stuff like that, seeing the way that you can kind of sabotage markets and, and things like that, you get to see how you can start interacting in some ways with people um, in ways that you haven't been able to do in other MMORPGs before. I mean, you just haven't, the systems haven't allowed you to kind of change things, especially of other people's, you know, like that is something that is just a no-no, like they just don't do it, it's just, you. there's so much risk to it, but I think, you know, if it's done right and you have enough checks and balances in place that, you know, it's really all about the negative consequences because, you know, in a typical MMORPG you have PvP in them, right, but it doesn't feel bad to a lot of people because there are restrictions on that or there are consequences to um, taking part in that. But they really just kind of, you know, put it into an arena. Whereas, you know, with this, uh, with the plan for revival, as we can see, you know, we're going to get into PvP later. But beyond PvP, there's going to be an entire game world where negative consequences can happen. People can do things to each other. But, you know, hopefully the consequences from actively, you know, sabotaging another player will you know be heavily enough that people won't just go nuts with them you know they'll have you'll have to still choose wisely uh, whether you want to be a nefarious villain type or whether you want to be you know making making the right of good in the world so uh, either way I just thought this blog kinda hinted into that it was a really cool uh, glimpse into what the future interaction of these systems can be like yeah, yeah. I was thinking when it comes to branding um, I'm hoping that, because, so part of the branding idea is that, um, ties kind of into the ingredients that go in, um, the soil, uh, the type of fruit and all of that. In the real world, um, in Europe, they're, um, much more persnickety about how they label their brand. So they want cheddar cheese to actually come from cheddar. Um, if it doesn't come from that region, it shouldn't have that name. Um, whereas, you know, here in the U.S., we just slap that kind of label on anything that's similar. Um, but in Europe, they really want that to be, you know, cheddar-style cheese, if it's not actually authentic cheddar cheese. Um, and I would hope that that will tie in in, um, in Revival 2, that... Um, as those tags are added, we'll be able to uh, determine, yes, this this wine came from that region, and because it came from that region, it will have these properties. And we would hope that branding would be a part of that, but I guess one of my fears is that um, individual players won't necessarily care about going in that far in depth, um, and they will just brand any type of wine with their label even though it doesn't have the actual um, attributes hmm. to make it a, a specific thing um, you know they could just make it it was made by me but that might tell us might not tell us anything about the actual qualities of that so we have to kind of hope that players actually do play along with the intention I think uh, something I'm kind of interested in seeing how it'll play out is just the time it takes to do things myself. Because uh, uh, in, in most games, most MMOs especially, it's just like if you're a crafter and you have the mats right there in front of you, you can craft what you want in just a few seconds. Whereas, especially in the case of wine, you could have everything right there in front of you to make the wine. It is still going to take however long it takes to take each wine. 
within the world of revival to uh, actually craft just even a single bottle of wine. That's a good so, uh, point to bring up because, you know, some people find, you know, having a process to something as a rewarding part of the journey and other people, you know, look at it as an obstacle getting in the way of what <laughs> what they want to do with I, it. So I up. am an incredibly impatient person, so yes. <laughs> But I'm still interested to see how it'll play out. So, uh, yeah, I, this coming from an incredibly impatient person who doesn't want to wait to craft something, I'm still looking forward to see how that all plays out in the end. Yeah, we hope we have to hope that the mini games are fun rather than feeling like a grind. Um, yeah. But I think that's one reason to have mini games instead of just doing just stuff. Just a loading cards. bar. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Craft I mean, I'm like bar. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if uh, if I think about this in terms of weapons, would we recognize weapons by specific shape? Um, you know, uh, the people from this area, this is the shape of their weapon. You know, if it's a katana, we should expect it to look like this. Um, or maybe a specific type of weapon has um, specific qualities. I was thinking, like, um, maybe a Fall Creek bow has to have wood that is only found in Fall Creek and has a specific shape. Um, and then individuals can rename that whatever they want, but maybe that would, you know, this is the recipe for a Fall Creek bow, and other people can recognize that as a Fall Creek bow, um, regardless of who created it and who, or how it's branded otherwise. Um, hopefully we have that level of verisimilitude. Another interesting thing to me about this blog is just the sheer, like you, it's, it's easy to take for granted the sheer amount of information that's being conveyed in the world. Um, you know, you take another MMORPG, you walk into a bar or something, and everything that you're seeing is generally for aesthetics. You know, you're, you see the props everywhere or whatever, but in this game, you know, like, they can actually mean something. The shape of the bottle can give you a hint as to where it came from, uh, who, who made it. You know, just... And if you take that and start applying that to other items in the world that you're going to see around, you know, uh, weapons, shields, decoration, you know, who knows? Like, we don't know all the systems or, I mean, all the professions that are there yet. I, I believe there's a list compiled, uh, being compiled that somebody has. I'm sure they could drop a link in. But uh, just understanding how much, you know, it, it's going to build the immersive environment for people starting to pay attention actually to what's there instead of just oh this doesn't interest me I'm not gonna look at it and they just rush through to the next thing there's a lot of stuff to take in um, from just standing around in a room and that's not even beginning to scratch the surface of the tags that may be applied to all those things underneath so uh, just really intriguing really intriguing stuff uh, I think it helps like I said you know with immersion of you know you're not just in a world because that's the flavor of the world and they're trying to make you feel it. There's actually meaning behind um, what things are made out of, uh, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, we had some interesting uh, stuff going on in the chat. Um, I think it was Ombla who was saying, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, no, it was Snipe Hunter who was saying, uh, making sure the minigames aren't just a pain in the ass to hide a loading bar is a critical challenge for them. Um, and uh, Nero was talking about other ways that branding can be done. Um, if we're focused on the bottle, um, making special notches in the glass in certain ways, um, adding bubbles. Um, and um, Snipe Hunter was agreeing with that, uh, saying that uh, the Coca-Cola bottle was uh, in mind when um, the blog was being written. Um, and um, But I think that just goes back to my... Um, the statement I made earlier, I mean, if you have this Coca-Cola Coca -Cola bottle, you know, what's inside it? Is it original flavor Coke? Is it new Coke? Is it the back to whatever the, 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 the modern flavor of, of uh, the, the modern recipe that's not new Coke, but still different from original Coke? How do you know for sure? And will that matter? Will people care about that? Will that be problematic? Um, that's just going to be interesting to see, I think. So one of the things I'm hoping that we can have, too, um, since it seems like soil will be a factor, um, 
maybe the specific grapes will be a factor, time of year will be a factor when it comes to um, uh, making wines. I'm hoping we can get general information like that in a wiki. That's general stuff that I wouldn't mind seeing in a wiki um, that sort of acts as the general lore for the world that doesn't necessarily get into the specifics, but um, things that are, are kind of could be common knowledge for the average person uh, in the world. Seems like that's okay to be in a wiki. Go ahead. Do you have something to add, Chesh? Yeah, you mentioned soil. I think somebody mentioned it maybe in IRC or in the uh, blog about wine there. And I, I think I've also read about it before, too, is that wine, like wine grapes actually need like really bad soil compared to other. Like it's weird. You're looking for actually a lower quality soil when you want to make wine grapes than you would with other things that you might want to grow. Um, so yeah, that's kind of weird that in some, with some things, maybe they might include that in game where certain things might actually require a worse grade of an ingredient like, or a soil or whatever. What, I, think have we, you. I think we talked before about, uh, well, we didn't talk on cam about it, but it was in the forums a while ago. And I think it might have been Auntie because she's wondering what uses we can put our uh, chamber pots to. Where does the poop go? Um, and uh, she was reminding us that um, urine was used to cure leather. Um, so, yeah, maybe there could be some nasty stuff that has to be put in use. Um, and if we have, you know, chamber pots as a thing, maybe we need a reason to use chamber pots other than just pooping. Well, there's yeah, a, there's still countries in the world that use it for uh, use human waste for compost uh, through a process. So I mean, that's something that I'm sure was done in the medieval ages a lot. Yeah, and it was also um, human urine was used in the dye making process for the purple, the regal purple of ancient Rome. Um, in addition to another or a bunch of other complicated steps, but there are there are potential uses uh, for these things, and I guess it's really subject to what uh, I guess Snipe Hunter in this case wants to um, wants to implement. But uh, yeah, there are uses for sure. So, Donnie, so were you thinking at all about um, crafting? Are you thinking about crafting weapons? How how are you thinking about um, acquiring your your gear? Well, I think the, the the most interesting thing about that will be uh, the thing is like in every MMO game uh, you play, you usually come to the auction house and see like three thousand of like you know, like steel swords. Just you know, the only difference is maybe like little stats or just price. But in revival, you will probably not see like even ten of them like in one place because it's. Uh, it's a real effort to make something. So the thing is, uh, I think it will be even maybe some some kind of a quest, like some kind of a story to find even a basic gear for someone, if you're like not a member of a giant guild. So that's the most interesting and intriguing thing for me, because uh, when uh, the crafting is not massive, and it ob like it obviously won't be massive in uh, revival, like such as in like the more casual games, uh, it will be. It will take some effort to find gear and to make it. So, and uh, reading the blog, I can say that it will take uh, quite a while to make even a single sword. So you will you will want to make some contacts maybe with crafters. So that's some interesting social lines too, I guess. Yeah, and since we have full loot. Uh, what happens when somebody steals that special sword that you like and you can't just go to the auction house and throw down some money for another one exactly like it? Then begins the manhunt. <laughs> well, I think, like, uh, another thing that you will probably not uh, wear the, like, gold diamond swords, like the fancy one with dragon runes on it. Uh, you won't probably wear it when you're like going somewhere into the wild. You will like you know put it on in your house and just you know oh I have this sword, but you won't use it. You will take the iron sword and just go there and you know kill somebody, kill a bear with it. No, because if you lose so much gold, it's not 
not the cool thing. For no, sure. the time to lose the sword is when you're out in the wilderness with your crappy sword. That means my thief can go in and steal <laughs> your sword from your house, your golden studded sword. I mean, but it's trapped. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if you know when it, maybe you have a weapon that you built yourself and uh, you, that or you, or maybe you bought a weapon from somebody and you start using it for a long time and somehow that weapon gets tagged with you know something very specific to you uh, maybe you've carried it around long enough so uh, if it does get stolen you can actually start tracing you know maybe through NPCs like they'll have anybody that's come in contact with a new person carrying that sword they'll have you know your tag floating around and you can start tracing uh, they'll be like oh you know I saw yeah I saw that and you can just bounce around I'm not sure how that would work but kind of an intriguing thought that is potentially possible with this uh, this concept in mind yeah that kind of had me wondering about um, what happens if uh, your special sword is key to a, a god and so anybody who worships a rival god who tries to steal it might get shocked or cursed or something else you know just because you loot something doesn't necessarily mean that um, you are actually going to want to keep it and use it yourself. Um, and it also reminds me that, um, do you guys know that somebody built uh, Mjolnir's, uh, Thor's Mjolnir, such that only he can lift it? Yeah, I saw the, that. Uh, I saw the YouTube video <laughs> with the super magnet. Yeah, yeah, electro yeah magnet. that's uh, pretty cool. So for those of you who haven't seen it, somebody actually took a, a thumbprint scanner and added it to the handle of a um, giant magnet that's in the the, um, the head of the hammer and he places it down on like a sewer grating and he asks other people to lift it and it's magnetized while it's on the uh, sewer grate so nobody else can lift it unless they have his thumbprint so he goes over and presses his thumb to it and he's able to lift it off which is uh, pretty cool um, we might be able to uh, find some ways to uh, make our own items uh, work just for us, good for us, bad for everyone else. That that could be interesting. A moment ago, uh, cursed swords were mis cursed weapons or whatever were mentioned, and uh, something that you might not want to steal. It, uh, a sword, a particular sword came to mind from this uh, one book series. Um, the sword would devour the soul of whoever picked it up, basically, right? One guy managed to get his hands on it, and his will was stronger than the will of the sword, so he was able to retain his soul. But anytime somebody would try to steal the sword from him, <laughs> you know, because it's a badass sword, he kicks ass with it, but they tried to take the sword from him, well, <laughs> they get their soul sucked out. So, uh, yeah, you, you might want to be careful about what you go trying to steal, too. Just because the other guy's a badass with it doesn't mean you will be. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's an interesting element that this specific lore brings to the table with Lovecraft and everything. You know, having this potential for extremely negative things out there, you know, relics, uh, items, and things like that. Um, you, it won't be like other MMOs where it's like, oh, that's a great thing, you know, I want it. You know, you might not want everything that you see. Uh, there could be a lot behind the scenes about it that you don't want. So it, the same thing can be said, too, for, uh, you know, breaking into somebody's house. Um, you don't know what they, what their house might be used for and what that might apply to you, what tags might carry over. So it starts to add a whole other level of risk to uh, being somebody that's doing evil, partaking in evil deeds. So, Yeah, one of the things that uh, was mentioned towards the end of the blog was um, applying poisons without... Um, without affecting the color or the other properties, the visual properties of the wine. Um, and uh, so that kind of opens us up again to other forms of, of PvP that isn't necessarily combat related. Um, uh, there was also the mention of, of applying different labels, so I'm, I'm stuck thinking about um, taking somebody's wine that they made um, and putting my label on it. I wonder if that's possible. Can we relabel a label? Um, but, uh, yeah, did anybody else have anything they wanted to add to the uh, blog? 
discussion before we jump over to PvP? I'm good. Cool. So one of the, one of the things that I wanted to throw in really quickly um, before we dive uh, head first into PvP from last week, um, there was an interesting um, discussion in of all places. Ironic that it was in the PvP versus PvE channel. Um, people were talking about um, how nice it would be to. Uh, for veteran players to help out newbies. Um, and uh, I was thinking about that. It's kind of interesting. I would, I would love for us to have some mechanism for how we could recognize that newbies are coming into the game and those of us who want to help them out would be able to be aware that they're coming in and have some ideas about their interests. But the problem there is that PvPers might also decide, PKers might decide, oh, let's find these newbies and, and go after them. Um, so that had me thinking, yeah, that had me thinking about the possibility of a hospitality skill where um, people who are so inclined to help out newbies um, could be made aware uh, that they're coming into the game, maybe aware of some of what their interests are, and... Um, Maybe they want to act as the protection for them, um, but that would be a skill that was run by um, people who were actively helping newbies versus uh, you wouldn't be able to get the skill or maybe the skill would be eroded if you're attacking um, these newbie players. Uh, go ahead. Chesh. One thing to keep in mind about this is that uh, we don't have a level icon floating above our head in this game like you do in other games. So that person who may be dressed up in like the rags of a newbie character could actually be a potential badass that you're messing with there. You go over there, you think about you're, you're going to gank some newbie, all of a sudden he busts out some martial arts, flips you on your back, snaps your neck, and you're just done. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, it's something to look out for if you are the type of person to try and prey on newbie characters like that. The other thing too is it, the game with this type of concept. Um, you know, you you well even in any game, a veteran player can go and just make an alt account or uh, you know a sub account and just look like a newbie player and have a lot other agenda. You know, with what they're doing, so it, it's tricky to you know start doing that. Obviously, you know it's a good thought to have. Uh, to make new players feel welcome in the game or feel like participants. I think to me well, that's the more be, important part is... It would be newbie characters, I think, not just newbie players. See, I, I think the more important thing wouldn't be necessarily to, you know, help them out, but to make sure they feel like they're engaged in it right away, even if some of it's bad, you know, like feeling like they're part of the, part of the plot would be, if I was going to be designing it. I would, that's what I would aim for more so than necessarily helping them, but obviously you'd want people to help them more than not so they don't get a negative uh, feedback. But uh, if the negative stuff is really cool, you know, there's a lot of people that play extremely hard games so like, oh my gosh, this is kicking my ass and it makes them try harder. So there's that too. Yeah, I think that you know, we had kind of a similar idea in EverQuest Next with uh, wanting to, uh, I don't know, just be hospitable to newbies, um, and uh, even if that's just showing them around town or bringing them cookies. Um, but um, I keep saying that we're going to have to rethink uh, some of the terms that we have for uh, PvP because it's so much broader, again, than just combat. Um, there's going to be all kinds of uh, types of PvP, character assassination, um, this poisoning that we can do. Um, Donnie, what are the things that you're looking forward to when it comes to PvP in Revival? Well, it's hard to say right now which part of PvP will be the most fun, but I guess uh, the most interesting like top tier PvP for me uh, will be city versus city, because obviously some guilds will try to take control over the city, maybe like the big guild, or maybe just very like, you know, smart and uh, unique guild. So, uh, and when one uh, guild 
take over the city, they might want to fight, maybe not like directly combat fight, but maybe trade war or something with another city. And uh, since we don't have like kingdoms or something, like, you know, giant countries, uh, the city versus city PvP will be the number one in my list for sure. But it, it we might can, be We can very create fun. kingdoms. We can create kingdoms. Keep that in well, mind. We, we aren't starting with kingdoms, but we can create them. If we work yeah, very hard and get very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe in five years we will get the kingdom. <laughs> five years so. plus. <laughs> yeah, five years plus, like two cities will make a kingdom. <laughs> oh. yeah. Bell, what are your ideas on PvP in general for Revival? What are you looking forward to? For me, I, I, you know, I haven't really gotten the chance to dive into a lot of what the developers have revealed about PvP, but understanding kind of what their intent is and their feel that they're trying to make behind this game, it gives me hopes for what I would like to see out of PvP and what, you know, is possible in this game. Um, I, for one, you know, as somebody who prefers, you know, or not prefers, I should say, but just really enjoys uh, some of the more... Uh, strategic diplomatic elements of combat or you know even non-combat elements of PvP I'll be really excited to see how much I can explore those and how things I do achieve in combat can be pushed into influence in the realm of diplomacy or vice versa um, I really you know for the a, a character type that I've always really enjoyed, I think I've mentioned it before, is like a Jarlaxle type from the Forgotten Realms. You know, he's kind of got his hand, his fingers everywhere. Um, he's paying attention to all the information because uh, you know information is power, and especially in this game, it seems like that's a really huge thing. So it'll be interesting to see what ways that you can take the information uh, or you know sift through it or whatever you're able to do to start leveraging that into uh, combat potential, diplomatic potential. So for PvP for me it's you know it's gonna be really interesting because you're gonna have multiple players you know doing this type of thing. You'll have people engaged in direct combat as well but having people that are you know trying to leverage their influence in you know the realm of you know in the merchants realm and all that to start kind of pushing their way around and bullying other, you know, entities and organizations. Um, so that's really interesting to me because when you have that upper level chess game going on, then, you know, just engaging in that, you know, you get in caught up in like a one-on-one -on -one duel or, you know, you get caught in an alley and getting jumped by a couple people. Now, not only is it, hey, am, am I engaging in PvP, but what are the implications of this? You know, who's attacking me? Why? Uh, you know, how can I avoid getting in, you know, this negative situation again, or, you know, how can I use, you know, what I know to my advantage? So it's really, I think it makes what PvP, a lot of PvPers enjoy, like, more enriched by the potential depth behind it. I mean, some people, you know, you might get just PvPing because, hey, I enjoy PvP, and they go out and do it, but I think if, you know, the game is done the way the developers are intending in the feel and the play gameplay works out the way they want it to, I think players are going to, it won't be that simple, players are going to get involved in PvP and they're going to instantly realize like, you know, by the weapon that person's carrying or by the clothes they're wearing, who it is, who they're affiliated with, you know, and all these layers start happening. So I mean, I'm sure you could be just like mindlessly going out and like battling people, but um, there's just so much more about it that can be enjoyed and I think uh, the potential is definitely there for the developers to kind of achieve this, you know, meta game to uh, the small level PvP that's going on and duels and honestly though like for my favorite thing that I'm looking forward to is when we find out more about boats and uh, naval naval warfare I'm really interested I mean I'm a big fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise I liked a lot of those games but Black Flag was amazing just because of that naval feel you know being on a ship um, it's just a different style of fighting, you know, you're on an island, there's nobody to help you, there's nowhere to run, you know, you've got to be uh, flawless with your execution in a lot of ways. So I think that, uh, I'm really intrigued to see how they pursue naval combat and PvP uh, on the water, so that's, that's the big thing I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that's kind of fascinating. Um, I think, and you kind of touched on that, Bell, that um, not only is it going to be more 
um, exciting and intriguing and rewarding for those people who like PvP combat. Um, I think it's going to be, I think um, player versus player is going to be ubiquitous and uh, people in general are going to like the various ways that you can have player versus player conflict besides just combat. Um, and I think that um, it's going to be more personal, and by that I mean um, we will be able to recognize that person who attacked us. We won't necessarily have to attack back um, in the moment in order to retaliate. We can wait. Um, we can, uh, you know, do character assassination later. It doesn't have to be an immediate you killed me with your sword, so now, you know, the only way to retaliate is to kill you with my axe. Um, there's other things that you can do. Um, and I think we'll have other reasons. Uh, Cheshire and I had a bit of a uh, back and forth in um, the forums this morning where I think we mostly agreed that um, I think my example was having a cook and uh, trying to uh, have my goods uh, catered at a mayor event um, and there are various ways for other people to try and stop that from happening that could be from uh, them poisoning my products that could be from them uh, uh, murdering me um, that could you know a variety of ways um, but just the fact that I am a rival uh, makes the potential to be killed um, more meaningful and not just a, you know, I don't know who the, who the hell you are, but you, you attacked me for no reason just because you could. Um, when there's a meaning behind it, that becomes more fun. And I think we're going to see people reacting in that way going forward with Revival. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. perhaps in a, in a certain essential way, um, really we're not even in a certain way talking about um, talking about PvP, I mean, as much as just competition, right? I mean, well, sort of, I mean, there's, even even Revival's scope of PvP doesn't strictly conform to pure competition, um, but I guess they those two both grow much more tightly together in, in Revival than in, um, than in other uh, previous games that we've played. Uh, I mean, I mentioned last time that I'm very intrigued to see just the kinds of ways that people, you know, find to interfere with each other or compete with each other um, because the systems basically allow them to um, and I tend to believe that people are very innovative when it comes to uh, um, you know uh, having fun at others expense and so I, uh, I am intrigued by the possibilities for what people come up with you know that are probably even beyond you know anything that any of us have thought up so far if only because we don't have the information necessary to like conceive of a plan um that said one of the things i'm i'm really quite you know when the big stuff goes down right when cities go to war i'm very very excited for those things to happen from like small alleyway encounters right you have the war of jenkins ear but you have the assassination of archduke ferdinand starting the balkan wars Right, leading into World War One, um, things like just things of that nature, relatively small events that then compound into actual you know chaos and and, and fun things happening. Uh, I'm very excited to see the actual things that get it started. Just the potential for so many things to trickle up, um, in addition to then trickle back down, is, is super super exciting. <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing because I just noticed uh, Nero say, I'm sure there has to be some god that rewards players for senseless PvP. And oh, oh, there, is. there is. Yes, there yeah, is. Yeah, there is. It's, uh, it's Beth Kalor, I would bet, or maybe even something else, but even just the uh, among the Elder Gods, Beth Kalor is pretty much just like kill, kill, blood, blood, murder, murder, all day. Yeah, that, it's really interesting the fact that, you know, when you take everything we've talked about and you start imagining on gold server specifically you know a, and a storyteller is going to be able to see who's the senseless killers out there and when they want to spark a war you know they plant a, somebody who really shouldn't be killed you know or they set it up to where they come across the path of that 
person who's just going to be like, oh, this person looks like they have a lot of money, I'm going to kill them right now and try and take their gold, and it's, you know, some mayor's daughter from the other city or something, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to see how, you know, what those guys are going to be doing behind the scenes to start messing, uh, well, not messing with things, but, you know, starting to manipulate a larger plot and, you know, create a real story for us to play in. That's going to be exciting. I'm really yeah. stoked, by the way, to, to see uh, how this, these um, Conquerors of the Sea will work. Uh, you know, we had that those concepts back in, I don't know, the 1400s. It was like Spain ruled the seas or whatever. Um, I hadn't even thought about that in terms of PvP, but just... Um, controlling trade on the high seas is kind of fascinating idea. I'd been thinking of land battles primarily, but sea battles is kind of interesting. Was that Chesh, you, who were about to say something? Yeah, something that uh, kind of excites me with the uh, PvP in Revival is uh, how the, the PvP will begin to escalate. Um... Uh, I, I, I like big battles. <laughs> I, I like to see wars and games and stuff like that. And I, I also like to see things lead to the more direct approach. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it might start off, you know, you got a little trade war going on between two cities. They might do the character assassination, just trying to ruin the competition's name. But eventually, I, I imagine that some of these non-violent disputes will begin to e escalate into more violent ones. I mean, look at uh, this morning, uh, Diggs mentioned me and him had a little back and forth. I brought up the, uh, the mafia, <laughs> the Italian mafia, who like, they, they did business. They, they, and sometimes people would try to uh, do character assassinations or uh, whatever against mafia family members. The mafia was the type to escalate conflicts <laughs> to a point where their competition couldn't escalate anymore, which often meant they would go in and start gunning down whoever their competition was, uh, send very, very violent but direct messages that way. And uh, I, I, that's something I'm interested to see happen in Revival. I, I want to see people actually, you know, pull that kind of thing off. Uh, I don't know. I, it just excites me. <laughs> well, another thing that just came into my mind uh, was the, uh, the, like, the deep uh, stages of diplomacy which can happen because uh, in some of the games, like even hardcore games, like even Line, you could make arrangements and like, you know, uh, like the Alliance is only for one fight, and then a uh, fight is ended, and you guys, let, let's just shoot each other for fun, because, you know, why not? Uh, but in Revival, uh, the Alliance will take a lot of, like, work in it, because you not just say to your guys that, okay, we're, we won't kill each other in this fight, but you also have, like, NPCs to know that you're, like, allies, like, your tax to be some, maybe in some way change it. And you can't just say, okay, uh, we're gonna kill you now because we're traitors. Uh, you have to do some some more work about it. So uh, it will be uh, a lot more work uh, in social plan and like in connected to the PvP, I think. <laughs> yeah, that has me uh, <laughs> thinking again about the gods and karma. Um, it might not be so easy just to. Uh, assume that it's okay to kill somebody who was your ally if you're both, you know, allied with this, if you're both um, worshipping the same god and your god is not going to be happy you killing other people who worship them. There's there's other things that you're going to have to think about just besides um, it's going to be fun to kill this person just because I like killing people. Um, there can be uh, repercussions there that make it so that we'll want to contemplate who our victims should be. I can't wait to see on a gold server when two rival guilds get huge or something and some storyteller comes along and is like, 
what can I do to force these two things, these two entities to cooperate? And they just, you know, implement some event or something where these people that absolutely hate each other all of a sudden have to figure out how to cooperate to survive or to uh, continue achieving their goals. So that would be, that would make, you know, just kind of, that's what I would be doing to people. If I, it'd just be so fun to mess with people like that. Yeah, sometimes the bigger threat makes it so that you'll want to work together. Um, you know, it might be that uh, everybody needs to work together to make sure they aren't stomped on by Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah. uh, did anybody uh, have a chance to see... Were you going to say something else, Chesh? Uh, no, go, go ahead. Uh, we had a, um, a new person in the forums this past week or so, Yeg. Um, who's been in, uh, I think, especially the PvP forums, and he mentioned um, an interesting idea about uh, a tag called the Bloody Tag um, that might be possible if uh, you um, murder someone and you steal their stuff, uh, all of their money should be tagged with the Bloody Tag, and maybe their items are tagged with this Bloody Tag. Um, and that might affect uh, how people interact with you, whether they want to uh, trade with that um, anything with that tag on there. But I think um, I think that can't be a general case thing in terms of uh, um, you know. I think there will be too much um, general killing and looting for it always to be bringing that tag. I think it's going to have to be a more specialized um, case where uh, stolen loot um, has that kind of negative aspect to it. What do you guys think? It's something uh, that always bothered me in uh, Skyrim, actually, is that if you, like, stole things, you couldn't sell them anywhere unless you were in the Thieves' Guild and had access to fences. I'm like, so if I steal a cup in uh, Winterhold and I go over to Riften and try and sell it, nobody will buy it because it's stolen. They somehow all magically know it's a stolen product and they won't buy it. I'm like, H how would they know? <laughs> how could they possibly know that? And it's, yeah, it's, that's why I'm not a big fan of the whole bloody tag. I mean, unless it's like, I could understand it if I, like, stabbed somebody and then looted their clothes. Yeah, their clothes would literally be bloody. Um, in which case, yeah, I would totally understand, again, a merchant not wanting to buy that. Yeah, I think, but that's can, like, I think uh, that it can only uh, work with some, you know, special items, like the famous ones, but not with, like, you know, the, just some copper gold or something. Yeah, like if... Yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, if it was a knight who had a very recognizable shield, and I somehow came in possession of it, cough, cough, killed the bastard, um, and tried to sell it, I could understand people being like, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> you obviously still you might not wanna, <laughs> Yeah, you still might want to move in some other city where no one knows what is this item, and just sell it there, but still. Not like, you know, the bloody target... Like, no one in the world will buy it from you. I know that uh, seems strange. Another interesting facet, too, is uh, I'm absolutely positive there's probably going to be some type of profession or role in there for people who, you know, melt down valuable items into their raw resources and send them back into the market that way. So uh, you'll have that option as well. Uh, Umbwa said in chat, I think that a normal cup might not be notable, but you can't just hawk the alder crown. And it took me a while to figure out what he meant by cup. Um, but, uh... Yeah, it's looking like the, the, the uh, average item probably shouldn't have it, but something recognizable like uh, Cheshire was saying, then that, should, that should make some... But would people in Kongarai recognize the alder crown? <laughs> Yeah. Would everyone in the world recognize what it looks like if they've never even seen it before? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think since you have people from the Synod in Khan Garai, but maybe not people in Valkreek. But that's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Maybe. Because well, uh, the, it, right? the, I mean... the Alder Crown is important mostly to the Nodens religion. So I could understand like a, some Nodens uh, worshippers in Congrai being like, wait a minute. But if I go to a shop and it's run by uh, somebody who might not worship a god or maybe worships a bastard or something, they just see a crown, you know, a fancy crown. They wouldn't even think that it might be, oh, wait, that belongs to that church of Nodens on that island way out there. You know, it's not important to them or they might not even recognize it because, again, the religion's not important to them. They never went, learned about it or saw it. <laughs> So, I, I could still see things like even notable artifacts like that still be getting sold off if you uh, sell it in the right place to the right people. All right, we are getting close to the end here, unfortunately. But uh, I wanted to get we I grabbed a couple questions up from the chat and I wanted to ask a couple of them. There was some pretty interesting ones. Uh, Headclot asked, "Have." They, uh, the developers, detailed weapon, hidden weapons yet? Uh, cane swords, small crossbows, things that could be concealed. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? I don't think it was brought up yet, but I would, just, I would totally like to see that kind of stuff. Concealable weapons. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and there are always weapons you can hide in plain sight. I mean, you know, your walking staff, you can just hobble along and people think you're an old man, right? But then you whip out your full, you know, Wukong shit. And just start actually killing people for you know for messing with you. I mean, there's things you can do, and, and I think it's probably reasonable that uh, we can expect people to carry knives around, you know, for basic utility, right? But then you know you might have a particularly sharp knife that you carry around for slightly more utility, um, and and things of that nature. Hide a you know hide a dagger or a blade under your vest or something. Um, it's a uh... Yeah. Some other interesting weapons, like uh, up in uh, Russia, there is a spring-loaded knife that I've seen <laughs> oh, the <cage laughs> where the plate actually the shoots out. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That, that would be a surprise. That's not something I expect a knife to do. <laughs> but uh, apparently uh, R Russia has that. <laughs> so There's it's another... Like, uh, another combat-related question from Headquat that was asking, uh, how will combat work tab targeting or free aim similar to Mountain Blade. I'm not familiar with Mountain Blade. Is anybody familiar with it that can expound on that, maybe? The I think it's form? like just like Chivalry or Skyrim, just the, the simplest answer. And I think Ombla already answered that. It just, just will be, we hope it will be like Chivalry or Skyrim, like maybe something between. Okay. Yeah, and then with the own flare, I think, as well, you know, necessarily. <laughs> The, you know, with say, stances and such. I was going to say, um, with concealed weapons, I would think part of what that means is that they would be able to be equipped more quickly than um, other weapons, larger weapons, because that's going to take some time to uh, swap out weapons in general. So you could have, I mean, potentially you could have 10 weapons in your pack or inventory or whatever, but um, it's still going to take time to sheath and pull out another one in general if it's large enough. Concealed weapons potentially did come out of that pack more quickly. I don't know. Depends on the concealed weapon. If it's like a spring-loaded wrist sheath, yeah, that's bam, instant. But uh, other concealed weapons, like something you might have tucked in your boot, <laughs> that still takes time to pull out and draw. So that's why really depends on the <laughs> Yeah. Verde, really Mazzana, soul knife, just... Verde Mazzana asked, will some cities allow dueling in specific place or otherwise, uh, or will they only be taking place outside the city gates? So what are thoughts? I know, uh, just to weigh in a little bit myself real quick, will, we will be, there will be different government systems for different places, and different cities will be uh, more lighter or darker flavored. So I'm sure you'll see a gamut... Uh, you know, a, a wider range of, of different possibilities, but, you know, I, I will probably be hanging out a lot in the places where I can duel wherever I damn well please, so. Ha ha ha. I'm thinking, uh, Congarai probably, most likely, is indifferent towards duels. You want to just bust out a duel right there in the street, more power to you, uh, so long as you don't drag other people into that fight. Uh, and Crouch Rock has the arena. 
Yeah, Crown's, Crown's Rock, Rock does, does have an arena. arena. Crown's Rock does have an arena. We don't know how to what extent you'll be able to fight or whether there's going to be in-house rules for things, but potentially there could be, you know, full-on weapon duels, you know, that stop when you have your blade at the other guy's throat or something, or, you know, when he's dead, um, as, as needed. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely at least possibility in the first... Uh, in the first city, and then a couple of cities seem to likely lean in that direction, but beyond that, it's really hard to endeavor. And the last question I have here is from Mother Rabbit, asked about, uh, kind of related to the blog this week was, will there be brands, say the sword has been passed down via this family since, you know, insert X time period? So... I mean, that can have two levels. I mean, we kind of know from the blog that there will be a way to brand things, um, but it does pose an inter interesting question about if you possess something for a long period of time, you know, will it be associated with you anyhow, in any way, or can you alter that item and, you know, be, make it a family heirloom, things like that? The Armstrong gauntlets that have been passed down through the Armstrong family for generations! Yes! <laughs> Well, I'm pretty uh, sure that, that, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that that can can actually happen because if you have like a special sword which you use for like you know 200 years, there should be something like you know a giant ruby or something in it. So and everyone will probably recognize you that. So yeah, that and uh, that also might be you know if someone will steal it. You can just you know ask the gods like our family sword was taken and just try to find it or something. The only downside I see to it is that weapons do degrade over time even if you do try to maintain them. Well, you can reforge them for sure, I think. like That shouldn't be a problem. Like, Just reforge them. Maybe on the, the blade or something. Yeah, I'd like... Yeah, well, think about, for instance, the weaponsmithing block. Right? We saw that um, the one of the characters had found a pommel um, for uh, a weapon presumably of demon origin. Right, so assuming you had a way to remove it from the handle, or just remove the blade from the handle and pommel, you could, you know, be fighting with the sword for a long time and then still have the pommel, right? Because it's a pommel, and the chances of it taking a lot of damage are, cr are pretty slim. And then you just replace or resharpen the blade as needs be, or even turn a long sword into a rapier if it wears down enough. I mean, you could just grind <laughs> it to a point and have a fencing sword, um, and then go for. Uh, you know, go for something like that while still retaining, in theory, some of the tags that might be attached to the pommel part of that weapon. Um, maybe. But if it's a blade, you know, you better hope that shit's made out of diamond. <laughs> I think it would be cool to see some sort of lineage system where, um, not the game lineage, sorry if I confuse anybody, but a, line a, a system where, you know, the longer you possess something, you know, there's certain, like, time frames where, like, okay, you've possessed it for three months of ga game time, and it unlocks something you, that you're able to alter about the sword, maybe add a, a word to its name or uh, eventually alter the name to where, you know, you're, you know, this is your sword and you, uh, but it could be things other than the name, you know, altering things to it that are maybe superficial to it um, that wouldn't be specific to crafting or maybe you would need a crafter to help you with. Either way, I think it would be an interesting, uh, interesting concept to start, you know, playing with how long somebody's possessed something. Um, and what that lineage thing, and maybe it could be, you know, tied into the curse system. You have this for three months, and all of a sudden it triggers the lineage aspect of that weapon, and now you're dealing with, you know, a, a worse thing that you may not have known the sword had at the time. So, uh, kind of some cool things you could do with that, uh, but you know, cool thought, I think. Yeah, maybe, like, etch something into the blade or hang some kind of charm off the pommel or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, we know that we have heirs uh, as a mechanic in the game, so we can pass down skills and items to our heirs. Um, and I would think that would mean that we have heirlooms that are recognizable. I don't know what that means. Again, it could be cool to have things that are only triggered by a person who's a member of that family. Who knows? Yeah. Well, you guys, thank you uh, for coming today. We are kind of getting into the end of the show here. Um, so I, I'll just do a pass around Robin really quick. If anybody had any other thoughts, um, any other things going on this week you want to share or any other 
specific uh, ideas we didn't get to talk about, just throw them out real quick. Uh, Donnie, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, it's cool to see you. I haven't had, I don't know if you've been on past episodes. I'm not sure. I ha I've been gone, but uh, it was cool to have another new face here. Uh, this is my first time with Cheshire as well. So, um, or actually, I think maybe I was with you uh, on a couple shows ago when I came in briefly. Maybe. I'm not sure. But either way, both of you guys, cool to get new faces and uh, learn some new people in the community outside of just what I'm seeing in the forum. So, thank you guys both for coming. I think it was our very first time, like my very first time on the show. I think you were there. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh. That was a long time ago. I see you. <laughs> yeah, it's we've been doing it for a while. This is episode 30, you guys, and uh, the blogs are at 50. We're two weeks short of a year, which actually I'm going to say this right now. I have been wanting since the very beginning of the show uh, when we first had uh, Snipe Hunter and Ambo on and stuff. I want to get Tiggs on this show, and when I emailed her, she totally deferred to the developers, like, avoiding the spotlight and all this, and uh, I think one year of community forums being open, uh, we need to have her on the show, so uh, you guys need to petition uh, for Tiggs on RevivalCast in a couple weeks, so I'm going to send her an email again, and I need your support. <laughs> so bother her, bother her on the forums, but yeah. yeah anyway. We can do that too. <laughs> can bother her in IRC as well. Alright. Um, anything else from uh, Sale, Diggs? You guys got anything else before I close this out? Yeah, uh, yeah so just looking forward uh, in Revival, we are once again exceedingly close to uh, hopefully having um, a client update released. Um, as far as I know, it will probably be a torrent again um, instead of uh, having a patcher. Um, but Hopefully that'll be like like before the end of the month, even if we're super lucky. Um, it was in uh, testing and QA last uh, um, last week uh, for the, some of the new furnishing stuff, uh, and so it's right there. And then next week as well on Friday, Umbla will be starting a new uh, series or mini series for his for the blogs, um, which will be very lore focused as well. Um, so look forward to that if you're a lore hunt. Uh, Tales of Crowns Rock. Yes. That's good. Yes, I'm going. I, that also. I'm glad you said that. That reminded me too. I'm going to be starting uh, an interview with Ambwa over email over the next. I don't know how long it'll take us, uh, depending on when we answer each other back and forth. But uh, ten ton look for in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to start a multi-part uh, interview thing, kind of like I did with Snipe Hunter on Ten Ton. If you guys saw that one, so. Um, very lore focused and hopefully um, some lore based stuff as well outside of that interview so you guys can look forward to that uh, and that's all I really have um, uh, if we don't have anything else uh, thanks you guys for coming again uh, if you're just seeing this on YouTube you can tune in live uh, on Sundays every day at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, participate in the conversation like literally there are very few one line uh, sentences in the chat. Everybody's having a conversation. There are paragraphs. Uh, developers are answering questions. So uh, join in. Uh, the live show is, is a lot of fun. Um, thank you guys for coming. And on behalf of everybody else on the show, uh, ta-ta and we'll see you next week. Take Bye care, everybody. Man.